Welcome back, and here we are in Mastercam. Now, one thing I forgot to mention that's very important is saving. So you want to save this pretty frequently. A good rule of thumb is that you should save every time you create a new machining operation here in the Toolpath Manager. If you wanted to turn on Auto Save, you would go into File, Configuration, Files here, Auto Save and Back Up here, can turn that on and set an increment. So I've got it at 15 minutes so that if Mastercam crashes, which it sometimes does, I'm only going to lose a certain amount of work. Everything else here in the configuration is another video topic, um, but it really just allows you to optimize your workflow and customize what you're doing. So with our part here, we're ready to start making some tool paths. So Coming from a machinist perspective, once again, we have to think, how are we going to machine this? And from a machinist perspective, the first operation is always going to be face milling. Face milling is when you drag a tool across the face of the part, cutting the top, and creating a nice smooth face. I generally recommend that you always face your parts first. That way you have a nice reference that you're starting from and everything is flat. So, to do facing, there's a number of ways you can do it, but the most basic is going into our toolpaths. So from now on, we're going to be working in the toolpaths tab. We've got a lot of toolpaths here. Multi-axis is going to be for five-axis type work. 3D is going to be used for surfacing stuff. We're not going to dive into that right with this series. So all we're going to focus on are these basic two-dimensional toolpaths. And you've got a lot of them here. And again, like I've mentioned, we're not going to be even touching most of these. We're just going to be using the basics. So basic here is face. So we'll go ahead and click face. That's going to ask us to enter an NC name. Whatever it says is fine. Go ahead and click OK. Now. The way a toolpath works in Mastercam is you select which toolpath you want and then you tell it where you want it to cut. So this is telling it where we want to cut. This is called the chaining dialog window here. So this is how I select geometry that I want Mastercam to cut. Now with a facing operation, if you've set up stock, you don't actually have to tell it where you want it to cut. If I just click OK here, it's actually going to use the stock boundary as its facing geometry. I find that easy because it's just I don't have to click any more geometry. So I go ahead and use the stock as my facing geometry here. So we've told it where to cut. Now we're going to tell it how to cut. And this is the parameters window here. So this is where we're going to give it all the parameters for cutting that are needed to tell it how we want it to cut. And you can see here, it's a pretty basic looking facing toolpath. So the first step is always going to be selecting a tool. So I'll go ahead and click tool and I'll select library tool because I don't have any tools here that I've used. I need to go into my tool library. So to do that, select library tool and I'm going to go ahead and open the library that you are all using. So this is the default tool library that I just opened. Yours is already set to that. And it automatically filtered tools to the face mills. If it didn't do that, if my filter was off, you can see all these tools and there are 368 of them. So that's pretty hard to sort through. So if I go in and filter, I can filter tools by tool type. So right now it's selected on face mill. So if yours comes in like this, this is selected all of them. If I single click these, that's just going to remove those from the filter. So it's not going to bring those up. And if I want to quickly remove all of them, I can double click one of those, say taper mill. If I double click end mill, it's only going to show me end mills. And if I double click face mill, 
it's only going to show me face mills. So in our shop, typical face mill is 2 inch diameter. I'll go ahead and select that. All right, and again, as I've mentioned, most of these, these parameters you're not going to actually have to mess with, but I will cover these really quick. So right here we have, these are the speeds and feeds of that tool. And this is where you're going to be editing and changing the spindle speed and how fast that tool is going to be feeding. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're not going to mess with that, but just know that when you were going to actually set this up to run it on a machine, these are parameters that are very important. Now, if you bring me a program that you've written, I will probably go in and modify speeds and feeds as needed to uh, adapt them to our tools and our machine. So for now, we'll just ignore them. So we'll have our two inch face mill. Cut parameters, this is where you're gonna tell it how to cut. So the style of cut is gonna be zigzag. You can see it's gonna be going back and forth. These step overs, you don't have to mess with those right now. I have these set um, to defaults, but yours might look different, so don't worry about that. What we do want to make sure is that the move between cuts is on high speed loops. And the reason for that is, if it's not on high speed loops, you're not going to get this nice smooth rolling action. It's going to be more abrupt. So make sure it's at zigzag and high speed loops. Another thing is you want to make sure that it's not leaving any stock. So stock to leave on the floor because we want this not to leave any stock on the floor make sure that's set to zero. Depth cuts we're not going to worry about at this time. Final step is linking parameters. Now this is where you're going to tell it how deep to cut. So a lot of times students think that depth cuts is where you tell the machine how deep to cut. Depth cuts is actually something totally different it's splitting up the amount of cutting into multiple steps, as you can see by this graphic here. So if you have a lot of material to take off and your tool can't take it off all at once, you would want to use depth cuts so that you split the cutting up into several layers or slices. This is where you're actually going to tell it how deep you want your cut to be. So I could say negative one inch if I wanted to cut one inch down into the part. Because we're going to just face off the top on a basic skim cut, we're going to set that to zero. And we want to make sure the top of stock is also set to zero. So really, that's it. We're good to go. We'll go ahead and click OK. So now you'll see our toolpath has been created. The toolpath is denoted by these blue lines. The blue indicates feeding motion and the yellows and reds indicate other types of motion. These are rapid moves, basically the machine getting from point A to point B as fast as possible. So the tool comes rapid down, feeds across and back, and then rapids up, and that's it. <clears throat> now if you were feeling extra ballsy, you could in fact run this, throw it on the machine, and press go. I don't like to do that. That's risky, and you always want to do two-step verification on these. So we have two methods of verification. The first is called backplot. So to do a backplot, we'll go up to our toolpath manager here, and on these icons, you can hover over them, and it's going to tell you what it's going to do. So our two verification styles here are backplot here and verify here. So we'll start with backplot and I'll click single left click back plot. That brings up our tool. I can play through here. You can see the motion. I can also click S and that's gonna step through. And if I click S or B, I can, I can step through my part. So, that looks good, it's just running a face tool over the top of the part, so we are good to go. We know that that's what we wanted. Now, the second type of verify is using the verify function. Now this is gonna take the stock model that we've created, 
It's going to open a whole new window, and it's going to run a more in-depth 3D simulation. So now it takes our stock, and we can actually see what is going to happen here. So there you go. It cuts a little bit of stock, and good to go. Auto save popped up on me there. All right. Now, I'm not sure why that's set there, so I'll turn that off. So we run it through Verify here. That's going to pull up a new window. You can see the stock model there. And if I play through, you see it runs over the top. And it didn't actually cut anything in the simulator because the stock is exactly where the tool is. So it's not actually removing any material here, but it will on the machine. All right, so that's basic facing.